Hello class, in this uh, video, we're gonna be covering 5.2, which is subsets. And there are 18 problems in this particular um, assignment. So problem one says select, um, is a subset or is not a subset. That's what those two symbols represent for the blank so that the resulting statement is true. So you have this set and then you have this set. Now I, this one doesn't need to be rewritten, but this one, there's some stuff missing in there. It looks like a bunch of counting numbers or natural numbers, but they're missing three, four, and five. So I went ahead and wrote those out. Now, because I do have the element one, I do have the element five, and I do have the element three, then yes, this guy is a subset of that one. Now for number two, same directions. So this one was all spelled out, but in this case, I'm gonna put the not a subset, okay? Because zero is not an element. So four, negative four is in this set, positive four is in this set, but zero is not an element in that set. Therefore, the whole set cannot be a subset of this set, okay? Maybe those two numbers by themselves would be a subset of that set, but with that zero in there, it is not a subset. It has an extra entry that is not contained inside the other one. So number three, same thing. We have eight over six comma 11 over three, and we have six over three comma three over 11. Here again, the answer is not a subset. Neither eight, six, nor 11, three are elements of that second set. They, they flip the fractions over, which makes them completely different values, okay? So this one is not a subset. This guy is not in here and this guy is not in there. So he's not in this set, this guy's not in this set, which means this one, the whole thing is not in there. Now, number four, same thing. Well, now you have the empty set, okay? Now this one is in there, okay? It, and it's a weird one, but it's mostly a definition than it is a logical process. Um, the empty set is defined as a subset of all sets. So it doesn't matter what the set is. It doesn't matter what this is. The empty set is a set is a subset of all sets, okay? Um, the empty set is also a proper subset of all sets, okay? And that will we'll come into that proper in just a moment because notice the difference they have this symbol here with the line under it, and then the symbol again without the line. And it says, determine whether is a subset, is a proper subset, or both, okay? And so that's, they're gonna eventually start getting into this proper subset. When you list the list of subsets, like, so let's say you have a set, right? Like A, B, C, D. And then you list the set of subsets. Okay, um, you're gonna have the empty set itself because of the definition right here. You're also gonna have A by itself or B by itself or C by itself or D by itself. You could also have the set AB, that is a subset of this, AC, AD, ABC, ABD, you know, whatever the combinations are, those are all subsets, okay? Even the set ABCD itself, is a subset. However, ABCD itself is not a proper subset. So a proper subset is basically a subset that is not equal to the original set, okay? So for number five, you have VCM and the other set is VCMR. So all three of these elements are contained in this uh, set. So therefore this set is a subset of this one. And because this is not equivalent to this one, right? This one has an extra element, then that means it's also a proper subset. So this is a regular subset, this is a proper subset. Oops, I'm just shaking everything up over here. There we go. So same thing, is it a subset, a proper subset, both or neither? Now here we have one, three, five, seven, nine. Now here we have seven, five, three, one, nine. Now this is a subset 
it's the exact same set, honestly. It's just this one's written in a different order than that one is. But remember what you have to be in order to be the same and equal set. Um, you just have to have the same cardinal number and the elements have to be exactly the same. So the elements don't need to be in a specific order. They just need to all be there in order for it to be um, equal. So it is a subset, but it's not a proper subset because the set itself cannot be a proper subset. Remember, proper subsets do not equal the original subset, okay? So this is the original. These are the subsets, possibly or not, right? This one is, is a subset of this. It's one of the many subsets that can be created using these five guys, but it's not a proper subset because these two things are equivalent. So number seven says the same thing. So here you have X is a person living in Tennessee, and here you have Y is a person living in Nashville. So the question is, are all the people that live in Tennessee also living in Nashville? And that's wrong. The other way around would be, a subset, but in this direction, it is not a subset, okay? So you would say neither. It's not It's not a subset, period. So if it's not a subset, it definitely can't be a proper subset, okay? Um, so this one's neither. Since all the people living in Tennessee do not live in Nashville. I mean, you could be living in another city in Tennessee, and I'm awful. I don't even know another city in Tennessee. Um, I really don't know another city <laughs> in Tennessee. That is awful. I'm Googling it right now because I'm totally brain farting on other. Memphis, there you go. That's another big one. I was like, there's got to be other ones that I am just not thinking of right now. But yes, Memphis, Jackson. I was thinking of Jackson, Cleveland. Okay, never mind. I'm getting off track. Okay, number eight, same directions as it's what happens when you get in the seat and you start recording. <laughs> Brain just starts going crazy. Anyway, um, so we have this set A. Um, X is a natural number and it's between four and eight, but four and eight are not included. B is a set of all natural numbers between three and nine. Again, not including, okay? So I like to write them in their roster form before I can compare. So A is actually going to be five, six, and seven, since I can't include four and eight. And the set of natural numbers between three and nine would be four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, five, six, and seven are all in here. So it is a subset. Now, this one is not equivalent or equal. I should say it's not equal to this one. So then it can be a proper subset. Same directions here. You've got the null set in there. We already talked about the null set or the empty set. The empty set is always a subset. And because the empty set is not equal to this set, it's also a, a proper set. So it's both the subset and the proper subset. Now, number 10 says, determine whether the following statement is true or false. Luis is an element of the set Bob, Linda, Tina, Jean, and Luis. The statement is true because the symbol, that little E looking thing, means an element of, and Luis is an element of the given set. Uh, set. And if you notice, those are all the people from Bob's Burgers. I think the Bob's Burgers movie just came out, so a little bit of relevance there. And I was going to start changing the names when they created names to, like, my brain went to Rick and Morty. But then I noticed these are the names that they use in the homework assignment. And so that was interesting that they already used Bob's Burgers. <laughs> And then here, Stan, Francine, Haley, and Steve from, what is it, American Dad, Peter, Lois, Meg, and Chris from Family Guy. And I think later they did another one. I can't remember. But I was like, oh, wow, they're already doing the names. Um, so number 11 is, again, asking us if it's a true or false statement. 
So it says Stan is a subset of Stan, the set San, Francine, Haley, and Steve. The uh, statement is actually false because the symbol, this symbol means a subset of, and Stan is an element of the given set. Stan is not a set and therefore cannot be a subset. Now, what would make it a set? What would make it a set is if it was in squigglies like this, okay? So notice for number 12, the set Chris is a subset of the set Peter, Louis, Lo Lois, Meg, and Chris. Now that's true because, um, because Chris is a subset of the given set, okay? Whereas this one was an element, not a set itself. Only a set can be a subset. Now, number 13 says, determine whether the given statement is true or false. So this, oh, this is that problem I was talking about. I just probably overlooked it. The set five is a subset of the set, set five comma set 12. So this set has two smaller sets inside of it. And one of those sets inside of it is this one. So this is a subset of that because it's a set. So the set is a subset. Um, and so this is true. The set five is an element of that set. And I think the symbol that they used here is element, not the subset one. So be careful because there's a difference between this and this, okay? This is subset and this is um, element of. And I know my writing is not the best always, probably ever, but it is this symbol that's there. Which is interesting because if the question were to ask with the subset symbol, both of them would be true. This is a subset of this, and this is an element of that. So very, very, very interesting um, sets right there. So number four, list all subsets of the given set. And you have the set with the number zero in it. Well, we already know that the empty set is a subset of any set. And then you would basically do all the combinations of the elements inside that set. But since I only have one element, then I only have one other set that can be created. So both of these two. Now, it doesn't matter whether you use a null symbol and then this, or whether you use the empty set and then this. They both will give you a checkbox and you're correct, okay? Um, for number 15, it says, for the given set, first calculate the number of set, subsets for the set, then calculate the number of proper subsets. So the set they give me has four entries. Now, you need to know this, so I would put this on your note sheet for the test. The number of sets, is two to the power n, and n is the num the cardinal number, okay? So since the cardinal number for this set is four, um, there are four elements, then there are two to the four subsets. Well, two to the four in the calculator on two raised to the four is 16. So there are 16 subsets. Now remember that the set itself is not a proper subset. So you have to remove the set itself from that from this list to get the list of proper subsets. Um, and so you have 16 minus one, which is 15 proper subsets. Now, number 16 um, asks us the same thing to figure out the number of subsets and then the number of proper subsets. So here it says all numbers, that all natural numbers where the natural numbers are between nine and 13. Again, I always like to have my numbers in roster form. So I cannot include nine and I cannot include 13. So the counting numbers in between there would be 10, 11, and 12, um, which means there's three elements here. So the number of subsets would be two to the power three, which is eight. And the number of proper subsets would be eight, take away the set itself, which gives me seven. So there's seven proper subsets. Now, number 17 is a little lengthy here. So I got to give you the whole problem. And I might have to scoot it down a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. But there it is. 
So it says, determine whether the following statement is true or false. If the statement is false, make the necessary changes or change to produce a true statement. If X is an element of D, then X is an element of W. And so the chart they gave us was the breakdown of Catholic Americans by party affiliation and gender. So apparently there are 1,400 Catholic, Catholic Americans per 10,000 adults. So that doesn't mean that there's only 14. It means whatever the population is, you divide it by 10,000. And then that number times 1,400 is how many Catholics you have, okay? So it just means per 10,000 people, there's 1,400. Why they would do that, why they wouldn't say there's 14 Catholics per 100, I don't know. I guess they're trying to be more accurate with these numbers. Otherwise, those numbers would be decimals. Really doesn't matter. But anyway, so they broke down those 1,400 Catholic Americans per 10,000 adults into three groups. Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. And so there's five of those 1,400, 572 are Democrats, 446 are Republicans, and 382 are Independents. Then from those three categories, they broke those groups down even further into men and women. So of these 572 Democrats, 295 are men, 277 are women. Of the 446 Republicans, 230 of them are men, 216 of them are women. Of the 382 independents, 197 are men and 185 are women. Now C is going to represent the set of Catholic Americans. So this is C. R is the set of Catholic Republicans, which is this group here. D is the set of Catholic Democrats, which is this set here. Um, M is the set of, or they didn't even use any other letters. Then M is the set of Catholic Democrat men, and W is the set of Catholic Democrat women, okay? If X is a, and I'm just repeating this statement. So if X is an element or is a D, so if X is a Catholic Democrat, then X is a W. Catholic Democrat um, W means woman. I don't know why I wrote men. Um, And this is false because this is false since X could be a Catholic Democrat, but a Catholic Democrat man, okay? So just because you're a Catholic Democrat does not mean you're automatically a Catholic Democrat woman, okay? Although I'm sure you could crack a joke about that, but whatever. It's, <laughs> we're applying logic here, not comedy. So um, you just have to go with that. So now if it were the other way around, if the statement were the reverse, right? If it were to say, if a person is a Catholic Democrat woman, then they're a Catholic Democrat, that would be a true statement, okay? And so I think that's what I did at the bottom is I said, I swapped them. So if X were a Democrat woman, then X would be a Democrat Christian or Catholic, a Catholic Democrat, okay? Um, so again, if X is a Catholic Democrat woman, then X is a Catholic Democrat. That is a true statement, okay? But not the other way around because there is another group of Catholic Democrats that exists and that group is Catholic Democrat men. I don't know why they're stressing on the Catholic Democrats, but okay. Some of these questions are pretty interesting. Okay, now the last question in this particular section is the same direction. So if it's true, let us know. If it's not true, tell us what we gotta do to fix it to make it true. So here it says, if X is an element of D, then X is not an element of R. So I basically replaced D and R with what they stood for. So if X is a Catholic Democrat, that's what D stands for, then X is not a Catholic Republican, that's what R stands for. 
That is true, since the groups of Democrats, Republicans, and, and independents, it should be not and Democrats. Oh, in, in, uh, independence is what it should be. So it says, um, this is a true statement since the groups of Democrats, Republicans, and independents um, do not include any dual slash triple affiliations. You're either Democrat, Republican, or independent, according to the chart, okay? So since you can't be both a Democrat and a Republican, that is why this statement is true, okay? Um, that is the end of this particular video, and I will see you in the next one.